Collaborating with different team members across several different locations can be really challenging, especially if it wasn't a change that you were necessarily expecting to have to make. And in what feels like an instant, our surroundings have gone from this to this. We all know that working out of the same physical location offers many distinct advantages. The fact is, a lot of us have never really had to remotely collaborate to this extent during any phase of our careers. Most of us just aren't used to working this way, but some of us are. As an example, this past February at 3D Experience World, five user-driven teams unveiled prosthetic prototypes they'd worked super hard on as you can see, they came together in Nashville to pitch their concepts, share their designs, and in most cases, meet face to face for the very first time while doing great things for those in need. But if you take a look at some of these designs, you can probably tell right off the bat, these weren't made over the course of just one day in Nashville. No way. In fact, they worked for weeks across many meetings, communications, and revisions on concepts the world got to see for the very first time and judge as a community at the event itself. So how do they do all this? Emails, text threads, note taking on conference calls? No way! But instead of having me tell you how they did all this, I figured I'd call Rob, Jade, and Aiden from Team One. So they'd give you some of their insights informed by, of course, their experience during the hackathon, but also their experiences as product designers, as freelance design engineers, and in Aiden's case as a student, to give you an idea of how these tools could help you today in real world context that you're faced with. So Jade, I appreciate you answering my call. I know it's it's pretty late in the UK. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. You know, a lot of us obviously are working remotely or working from home in ways that maybe we weren't prepared to do or in ways that we've, we've never done before. You can talk a little bit about like how some of the, some of the you know, cloud storage and, and lifecycle management tools on the platform helped you guys. Um, I think that would help a lot of people today. Yeah, no, using the platform, you can store different versions of your SolidWorks CAD files, um, office documents, images, uh, and collaborate on your designs like that. You can give anyone permission to access project files anywhere from any device, whether it's a laptop or tablet. This made it really easy to access our models and pitch documents. Um, I ended up doing this at the airport on the way to Nashville, <laughs> you know, sat on the plane. The, the funny thing is that you guys had never met before, um, no. most, if not all of you, yeah. So. Um, which is obviously an interesting dynamic. Um, and, and the fact that, that you guys were able to connect on the files and, and the storage of, of those files, um, you know, from, from these different locations is, is pretty remarkable. Well, cool, I appreciate you taking the time. Um, I'm actually no, gonna go call, call Aiden, if you don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right, thank you, Jade. If he's up. <laughs> yeah, if he's up. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Jade. So my next step on my video chat tour was to stop back in North America where I called Aiden out of Ontario to hear what his impressions were of using some of the platform-based tools for I mean, collaboration. When you think about a, a tool like Project Planner on the platform in terms of how you know that, that helps you guys and, and how it could help you know in, in, in real world engineering context today and, and even even you know I think in production or scholastically. Um, just if you could just t expand a little bit on kind of how you see a tool like Project Planner being able to help with these sorts of things. So yeah, I'm pretty disappointed that my professors haven't uh, found a way to get onto the dashboard yet because if I had Project <laughs> Planner, I could just go over to it and I'd know exactly when my stuff is due. I'd have no confusion of an assignment that's normally due on Friday being due on a Thursday, having the hectic rush of finding out a couple hours before from, from an email um, that that's just like a little prompt or an update or a message with a friend, yeah. you know, I'd have a unified area of resource instead of something that's mixed match from a school website to your email to different information coming in both resources and both pathways and not really knowing what the overarching dates are, information is, what I've got to do and when it's got to be due. I think that that's really important. Um, it's very easy, even if you're reading an email, to forget about what it says or the exact important details. So being able to turn to something like Project Planner and see exactly when project deadlines are due, who's got to do them, and where we're at on them, I think is beautiful, especially since we're able to pair it with actually having posts uh, within the swim, without, with being able to share with your whole, whole team different updates that you have, right? It doesn't 
have to be a video call to be able to communicate, right? We're no longer in person. And I think everybody's had enough and their fair share of video calls at this point. Uh, so I think it's important to have somewhere that you can turn to at two in the morning whenever you're working, or maybe there's just a massive disparity because you've got people across the world. That was a big thing with our project with the hackathon. Mm -hmm. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate your time. I'll, I'll let you get back to uh, to your finals, but I appreciate you sharing, sharing the insights that, that you have with the SOLIDWORKS community. Thank you, Sean. I really appreciate it. You know, awesome. it's always nice to chat with you. So after I got off the line with Aiden, I actually jumped into another video chat call with Rob, who's based in the States here in Florida. Rob talked all about how 3D Swim helped them during the hackathon, but he also talked about how that could help us today in real world context where we can't meet physically as much in person. Uh, what really helped us out with that was 3D Swim actually, mm. because in there you can post threads about different topics. And since it's visible to everyone, it almost feels like you are in the meeting room where you have your whole uh, collaborative group putting input in there, which you can see practically immediately. So if you're interested in trying these tools out for yourself and taking advantage of all the things that Rob, Jade, and Aiden mentioned in today's video, check out the link in the description below. It'll give you a chance to try out these solutions for yourself or even just learn a bit more about the capabilities. Thanks for watching and have a good day.